world. Hey, and welcome to the Man Treads episode. It's already here, fuck. Doesn't matter. These are the weapons, or these are the shoes for the soldier that got changed in the Jungle Inferno update and then changed again uh, later. So basically it has air blast pushback vulnerability, which is a big deal. Also 200% air control when air blast jumping. So they basically have the old base jumper movement in these shoes, which gives for a lot of mobility and the potential to actually rocket jump further because you can use the air strafes to go further. Now I haven't been able, like my rocket jumps aren't as reliable to get a proper reading because my rocket jumps are a bit different every time. But basically what you would do is basically do like this jump, do AD shuffle like this while crouching and then you will get some more distance. So there's basically how it works. You jump and then you land on someone and they take damage and the more fall damage you do, the more damage you do as well. However, the pushback is pretty significant and I'll show you this right now. So here's a video of uh, the man treads on the left and the regular shotgun on the right. So against sentries, it's actually pretty darn good, I have to say. Um, and also jumping as well, you can actually go forward, like you won't actually get pushed back. You will, however, just get slightly pushed as opposed to the shotgun that gets pushed away. So great for sentry busting when you just need to occupy some space and just go forward at any point in time. So the pushback also isn't all that great. You can also do this while rocket jumping forward. You won't get pushed backwards. You will slowly just fall down. And you have to walk forward on the ground, as you can see here. And also while standing on the sentry gun, it won't actually push you off it once you stand on it. So that's actually really useful. So this weapon is basically um, anti-sentry. As you can see, double sentries. No matter, we can just go forward. So as you've already uh, probably figured out, that this is great against sentry nests pretty much just for bulldozing through and going through there and we can also we don't actually get pushed back even with two sentries firing at us like crazy uh, but this also means that you can't escape as well even with three sentries we can still just march on forward taking absolute and then if we jump of course then we get pushed back and even with four sentries we have about the same amount of pushback as you do with, uh, with just one sentry without it. And even, you know, five sentries, we can still move forward. Granted, it's very slow, but we're still going forward. And if you jump, you get knocked back. Also, air blast, this is the normal one without uh, mantreads. And you can see that the uh, air blast pushes you pretty far. Now, this is with the mantreads. Keep in mind, I'm not moving forward at all. And if I would have moved forward, I would actually have been standing exactly where I was. So as for pyros, you need uh, like four or five, six pyros to actually deal deal with this. Let's see. Yeah, all right. So then we have, sorry. Then we have the uh, rocket jumping part or explosive jumping. As you can see, you go much further from enemy rocket jumps than you do. As with soldiers, you kind of just stay on the ground. And while the others, you get launched away. A lot of people submitted this and basically used these as the gunboats. These are not gunboats. Do not use them as gunboats and say that it sucks. Because if you use it as gunboats, you're going to have a bad time because they're not gunboats. Have you established the fact that these are not gunboats? I mean, they're shoes, but they're not gunboats. Um, so before we go in, we got to have this in mind. This is not something you can run all the time. In fact, this is a weapon that you only use as a response if you don't want to run it full time to master like the air turning and the, the bombing. Basically, this is like a duck's hound thing where you just go in and you don't plan on getting out. So using this with the black box, no way. You got to use regular uh, like dart hit, whatever, uh, to do the damage and get in. And there's usually no way out because you can't normally you'd use pushback to get out of problems. Here you can't. So where you land is where you stand. So it's a make it or break it kind of weapon and it's very different in that, that regard. And also the added airspeed uh, control allows you to make split second decisions of where you want to land. Let's say you rocket jump and mid jump, you figure out, oh shit, I can't go there. Then you can use this to, to land again, but it's extremely hard to do. So let's start off with the first demo and enough me yammering about the uh, what you should do. Um, as you've already seen, it's great against sentries and not so good against much else. 
So here we are on Upwards. This is going to be me introducing this weapon here. So we're just watching a dead friend. Here we are. And then we're going to move out. So the, this is, you got to be super aggressive if you want to do this. This is the level of aggressive I'm talking about. You go for a jump and you can see there's a ton of guys on the cart. I'm not sure if this heavy has spotted me, but if he spots me, I can actually land on top of him and then kill him and then die. And this is the sort of thing you got to do. Like even when heavies are shooting you in the air, you're still going to land on them because... You hardly take any pushback whatsoever. But that also means if you miss and you try to escape, you're gonna die because you can't use the pushback to escape. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword, which is the most jarring for people who think these are gunboats. So this is gonna be me again, and just switching teams for auto balance bonus points. Uh, you know, it's not just landing on top of people that makes them take damage. You actually have to take fall damage yourself for this to actually have any impact as well. So here we are on the low ground and we're about to jump up. And oh, there's a guy. Oh, there's a guy. And I land on him, but oh, I didn't take any fall damage. So he didn't take any additional damage either. Um... I wish that was a thing, like always landing on people's heads would give them some damage, like a minimum amount. So at least that would be good. Uh, and because this weapon is a suicide weapon, it doesn't work that well with the quick fix. Even if you have a pocket medic with you, uh, the medic's gonna die and you're gonna die too. Uh, regardless of how much health you have. So, I tested this for a week and I was under the impression that, you know, maybe I could use it like the old base jumper with, you know, black box and market gardener, however... Man treads does not work that well with the market gardener. Uh, you can do it just for the fun factor, but if you want to be effective, you're actually missing out on stuff because you don't have the gunboats or shotgun or like extra health from battalions backup or any other weapons like this. Um, you got to compensate somehow, and the best way to do that is actually using the whip because keep in mind you can use the whip and then run faster, and then if you take pushback, you can actually ignore it even more. So I would say with the man treads, rocket launcher, and disciplinary action should be the best choice for this. So this is going to be Raoul Wrench. He's going to be running another uh, type of unlock. He's going to be using the direct hit of all things. And the reason is because, well, the enemy team has a lot of heavies as well. And we're going to see the first donk of the day or the first stomp, which is pretty darn good. It's the best. It's the best one. <laughs> wow. Do you see that? You see how good that was? I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go back, and we're gonna have to to look at that again in, in slow motion because that was probably just 100% luck. But if you're able to pull this off every time, then you are a master. So here he is, and then he's gonna go, and he sees goes in for the jump, and he's like, "Oh, the pyro's behind me. Let me just uh, shoot a rocket and do some air strafe." And <laughs> I love that stomping graphic as well. It's just so great. Um, it does some damage, so uh, it doesn't really make sense for you to use the Market Gardener. And the reason for that is because the Market Gardener, you have to land next to your opponents. It's very hard to land a Market garden hit right on top of people. And with the Mandreads, you want to land right on top of people. So basically, you could say, well, if I don't land on top of people, then I should just uh, use the Market Gardener to make up for that. And if I land on top of them, sure. But then again, you won't be using the Rocket Launcher. So if you use the Rocket Launcher, you will actually do 100-something damage as opposed to a melee hit, which only does like 60-something, depending uh, depending on various stuff. Also something to keep in mind. So basically, you use the Stomp as like an additional damage. Oh, and he gets another one! It doesn't kill him, but it hurts him pretty bad. The Pyro is probably at like one health or something because he did the second Stomp and... Oh, another one! Three in a row, taking out the medic. And then maybe the other team caps or something, we don't know. But that's actually very good. It's good for when you don't want to move. What's a situation where you don't want to move? Pushing the payload where you can get air blasted off into the abyss. Or you're defending a last point, or you're attacking a last point, and there's a pyro dispenser combo just constantly shoving everyone away. Use these boosts, you can just waltz right through. This is going to be Drury, and he's going to use the Beggar's Bazooka, and he's going to be doing some bombs for us. But he doesn't do any unnecessary bombs, except he does. And there we go, lands on that soldier, takes him out with one rocket, and then he jumps back. So the hardest part for people to, to, to learn is just how much air strafe control do you have, because it says... 200% air speed control, but also if you move too much, you're actually going to lose all your speed, and you only have to use A and D. If you use W or S, you're screwed. 
uh, even by by breaking because you do want to have that like kind of spiraling downward motion when you use this so they need to make some air shots on the guy and then he of course he used to have Saitochi because he he's a samurai man and then he's gonna go and use this here as spy take that out grab the ammo and then do the spams Goes for a little jump, looks for something, doesn't quite use the A and D things, and that's because it's gonna take a while, so... Actually, I'm gonna spend most of my soldier time just using the mantreads in every situation ever, trying to figure out how to properly utilize these uh, these air control speed to figure out exactly where it goes. But as you can see, most people, they do like this, they... Uh, he's dead, but as you can see, the pyro is... Oh, wait, hold on. There's the pyro. And that's what's also the case for, for many of my jumps, is that I landed right next to him. I didn't actually land on him. In that case, Market Gardener would be great. You can see he lands on a heavy, manages to put out an extra 80 damage, and then he dies. Because you literally have no way to escape unless you use the escape plan. But then it doesn't make sense because this is a one-way ticket. And why would you try to escape a one-way ticket? It's kind of like a dead ringer, but not for pussies. Um... It's like the dead ringer, but you die. You don't fake in death. You actually die when you use it. So next up is going to be Elaressa, also using the dart hit along with the whip. This is a potent combination, landing some damage on that. Uh, but we're going to see that Elaressa actually doesn't utilize air strafes at all uh, and might as well be better off with that. So it takes out a sentry. Would probably have taken less damage from that sentry if the pushback is... Um, is 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 better because you will do the same amount of damage regardless of distance on buildings and shooting dispensers that aren't moving can be difficult sometimes people are saying that you can strafe back uh, you can't strafe back you just stop your momentum and then you fall backwards as if you were to just drop from the sky and hold backwards so that is not recommended I would not recommend holding s to fall down because you can't mobilize and move as quickly and turn on a dime as you can normally. So here God gets crits Krieg, gets a lot of kills, but actually haven't utilized anything. Like here, you would want to do this. Hold A and D and do this to maximize your distance because you do fly a little bit longer because of the increased duration, I believe. At least it feels like that, but I haven't been able to confirm it properly because my data is always inaccurate because I'm a proper rocket jump. So there you go, jumping back with 70 something health, kills the heavy and dies. So in this situation, you could use gunboats. Would have had probably the same result, if not a bit better result. Um, speaking of using them as gunboats, we're going to uh, look at Mr. Kokelbag, our favorite man with the bag in his name. And he's going to be using these exactly like that. And also, pain train on the fence, really? It's like, I want to play at a disadvantage. Fucking idiot. You know what the pain train does? Here's the pain train. Plus one capture rate on wear, minus 10% uh, bullet uh, damage vulnerability on wear. So that means he's dying faster to bullets um, on defense. It's like the dumbest thing when I was casting Highlander. I see like some top high level play and the demo fucking ran pain train on the defense. Like what the fuck? Um, so there we go. And here we have him. Mr. Kokelbag going for a jump. There's nothing here, but... Oh, uh, if you would have looked to the left, you can see that there's a medic there. All right, place your bets. Will he stomp on the medic, or will he miss completely? The answer, he is going to miss completely because he's very focused on the sniper. Will he land on the sniper? The answer is no, because the sniper strafed the other way. And now we just have the high ground. And you didn't, do, do, you didn't use the potential that you had there. But it's also very difficult because you need to have crazy reaction times in order to pull this off and proper decision making. Like here! Well, he killed him with a rocket before he landed. And then he jumps back, strafes over this rock. Gonna hang on around the dispenser, get some health. Just doing basic soldier stuff. High ground shooting down works regardless of secondary weapon. Oh shit! And as you can see, like he jumps on the. Like you probably didn't know that the sentry was there, but actually, you know, jumping doesn't actually help that much because. It, you're gonna take more damage and not get pushed that far back and that's the d really downside of this you can't choose when to have the the pushback effect so you're, you're very much rooted wherever you stand and that is the most jarring because it's the only item in the game that does this no other class has this kind of uh, reduction unless it's like an uber or, or something like that 
So there we go. And he decides to just jump straight down in front of that pyro and then walk to here for some reason. And then he gets heals from the medic. The tiny the tiny desk NG peer. And there we go. There's a soldier air shot. No. Well, he got headshotted by uh, some some asshole with a sniper rifle. And here we go. So let's see. Some more rockets. I haven't really used this as much as uh, the mantras because the mantras you kind of should utilize jumping on people and using air strafes. Killing a spy. He goes by. Random crits are fair! Oh, did you see that? Please rate random crits of that clip. It was great. Eight kill streak. Oh, and then he lands right next to him. And then he jumps away and gets shot. I can't tell you how many times I've seen from people submitting today where they just land right next to the guy. They're like, clunk, and they're right next to him, not on top of him. So maybe they should pull out Overwatch and make the hitbox gigantic and fucking impossible to miss. All right. So next up, this is going to be Gugu. And uh, surprise, surprise, he's also going to be using these like gunboats for the most part. So he sees this here. And do, 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 do. Waiting for it to open. There's actually a sentry right outside, and now he has a medic. And look at this, sentry. Ah, oh, yes, this is what I'm talking about. This right here. He can rocket jump onto the sentry and take all the pushback, no problem. Is he gonna do it? No, of course not. He's thinking he has the gunboats. Uh, yeah, sure, he killed it. But then again, you're supposed to jump with it and take the pushback and utilize the fact that you don't get pushed. They need four sentries to push you back. That was only one. All right, so more sentries taking out everything. Pretty good so far. He has full, full stuff. I keep in mind you gotta be super aggressive like a dox hound. And we're gonna see one situation here where he goes and tries to jump on the cart. There we go, we're just gonna fast forward a little bit. There we go, we're back. And inside this tunnel is in the shittiest engineer position. Don't build it there. And then he takes a single push. And then he lands. If he would have used not these boots, he would have landed here. As opposed to here. <laughs> so that means he now has a shorter route to actually go back and shoot this. It doesn't matter because distance doesn't matter when you're destroying sentries and buildings. Holy shit, that was a Kritzkrieg engineer or Frontier Justice Kritzer, whatever. Taking him out. Easy operation. No problem. So there we go, he jumps and lands in front of them and get What? Dude, come on. <laughs> what was that? That was You didn't jump very far, you kinda just landed right in front of the sniper. That is the that is the second dumbest thing we'll see today. So, next up is gonna be Burning Arrow, who submitted a lot of stuff that was not very interesting, but he's actually using, he was the only one that actually used air strafes in a creative fashion. Because basically, if you look at the stats, they provide you a lot of tools. It's like, you don't get pushed as much, you can move further, and you can jump on people. These are tools that you can utilize if you realize that these are not gunboats. Oh wow, that was a nice little drop stab by the, the spy. Gets around a crit. Uh, right here in the tunnel, you kind of go into, I'm not gonna move mode. So you should be in the front, basically. Take pushback for the rest of your team. But holy shit, there's a lot of soldiers. And look at this air strafes. He comes up and he's like, nope, strafe around that one. Oh, another one, nope, gonna go down. All right, there we go. All right, there's a couple of soldiers there. They're on the flank. Medic's busy checking Facebook. There he is, he's back. Notification has been settled. Ooh. And, ooh, strafe right out of that one. Land again. Uh, strafe! Whoop! <laughs> that was a close one. So, at high levels, where you play against soldiers that are crazy good with the air shots, this one is just so good if you can use the, like, the air mobility just to strafe out of the way. And I think it's really underutilized. Of course, he gets face stab or backstab or whatever. 
but it's just so hard to utilize and nobody has really cracked this code yet on how to properly do it. It has the potential to be absolutely broken if used correctly in the right situations. However, people go like, well, these aren't gunboats and then they, they don't use them and they're like, this weapon sucks. But one day I'll show everyone the power of the mantrads. And then Val adds another stupid stat like, does extra damage to players who are crouching who just came through a teleporter. So this is going to be Amadeus. He's actually going to be using the Market Gardener along with this one because he felt like, you know, these aren't gunboats enough, so we're going to supplement these not being gunboats by using the Liberty Launcher, which gives you an additional rocket. And yes! Montage complete. Random crit to finish it off. Click the bind if he wants to ra rate random crits. He didn't. Then going back. So Liberty Launcher, sure, can work, but doesn't really help with the one-way ticket. You don't, you don't need five rockets, you only need four. Then he kills this other medic. Goes for a jump, doesn't jump very far. Sees a sniper, lands a couple of shots on this scout. And the Liberty Launcher is also a weapon that sucks pretty hard. Shoots at the demo and then gets shot. But we did get the Market Garden. Trolder, yay. I mean, the Liberty Launcher is the closest thing you get to a rocket jumper that hurts people. But let's look at something actually good uh, to use this for that we saw in the the video where I showed uh, the pushback. So here he is, Amadeus once again, back with the Renegade Masters of the Medic Clasters, which isn't a word. And then he's just gonna go forward here on Foundry. I'm gonna make a little jump and the heavy killed the target before we got there. That's okay, we have 100 health. Do some spam rockets, go back, look for a medic, grab health kit. You need health. To jump in and do something. Oh, look at this. We're in a good position. Oh, double kill. Nice. Market Gardener's out. Changes his mind. Could air strafe and potentially land on the soldier, but decides to keep the high ground and then give up the high ground to not get shot by this heavy. A nice choice there. And then he decides to just shoot the heavy. That would be a great way to just rocket jump. However, you have very low health and he might most likely would have died if you try that. But there we get the medic with us here in the front. And then we go up and we bully the soldier and heavy with mad milk is basically a walking ammo pack or health pack that shoots you. So five kill streak at the moment. He has his edgelord monster energy drink rocket launcher ready and primed. And then, oh shit, sentry. Oh man, if only we had something that was good against sentries on our feet. However, it requires medic and heals uh, in order to, to be good. So the medic isn't here, so good uh, good choice not going in there. There's the medic. Um, you might need more than just uh, the 300 health if you want to get in there and bother this sentry. So an Uber might be needed. However, it is will make it literally a walk in the park. You can just hold W and just walk in there. Despite th Even if they had a pyro ear blasting you back, you could just walk right in. But that's not the case, they don't have a pyro, they just have a sentry on a high ground that his team is completely incapable of doing anything with. And of course there's- oh! Random rocket! Ooh! Take some cover, get a heal arrow. People are actually uh, capping the point, so we could just, you know, go around the sentry, but fuck that! This is about principles, this is about showing you the power of the man treads. Here we go, use the uber! I missed the jump! Fuck! And then he used all these rockets, fuck! He just gotta reload! And jump up! Yes! 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 That was awesome and terrible at the same time. You're a dox hound, you just get in there! You just jump, it's like, if you don't make the first jump, reload, don't stand and waste all your rockets. If he would have not reloaded all the rockets in the fuck is this? If he wouldn't have reloaded all the rockets at the bottom and just jumped up again and done the reloading up top, then I would have given this an A+. This, however, was a C. I see you can do things better. Uh, but that was a good example of actually in combat. If the enemy team would have had a pyro, wouldn't have fucking mattered. We would have just get up there. Uh, no problem. Uh, easy, easy operation. operation. So here he is, Amadeus. He has he had three good ones. 
And if someone were like, but I submitted like 10, and uh, why did you show any of those? And it's because, well, you treated them like gunbo uh, gunboats or shotgun or backpack or whatever. You didn't utilize any of the tri uh, the the things that make the mantrads mantrads. Oh, your shots. And then the soldier bolts out of there. He's like, oh, it's the... It's it's the guy with the air shots can't uh, can't uh, get him. There you go, and jump with the market gardener and change your mind. Something you can do, medic nurse once again, going for jump misses the market gardener. Ah, lots of lots of dudes, and you can't surf away because mantreads. You don't have an easy escape. And oh, there's the soldier again. Jump away, medic. No, you got the medic. You bitch. Jump away to safety. He's after me. Good thing he's just a trollger that's having fun. All right, back to spawn, guys. Back to spawn, switch loadouts. Let's defend. Defend, defend, defend. Holding high ground, there's a sniper. Oh shit, here they come. Ah, oh, the fucking market gardener stomp tactic. It's so good. Kills us. Oh, okay. I got the feeling that his team was absolutely garbage. But at least you saw the stomp mark, uh, the mark guard stomp, whatever. He killed the medic awesomely before they lost horribly. Uh, like, at, at, you died, but at least you were spectacular the moment before death. So, this is Adam WTS. And he's just gonna go forward here and look at the strategy. All right, so there's sentries inside. We have Uber. We can, at any point in time, just go in there and destroy everything. And that's exactly what he does. He's like, sentries, all right, here we go. And a rocket for you. And just run up. Yep, just hold that W. And yep, take care of that. Oh, I uh, need another rocket fat. Here we go. Nice. Easy operation. Nice, nice. And and that's how you break if if the enemy team has a ton of sentries and shit in there. And with Pyro's air blasting. If they do that, just man tread soldier Uber. Just waltz right in and oh, the <laughs> double crit. Ooh, feels good to be at a WTS. Uh, there we go, shooting some rockets, killing the soldier, going in, capping, fucking easy mode. Easy operation. And the enemy team cries, 14 points, top fragger. Backpack's big, got his entire team in there. Feeling great. Cool, top notch stuff. All right, so that was all the user submitted ones. These weapons are like what I gathered from all the submissions and people that weren't shown is that these weapons are hard to understand, hard to play, and hard to get a feel for. You need to be an aggressive soldier that is not afraid of death. You need to be a Viking soldier, like me. I value the death of my opponents more than I value the life of myself. So we're gonna go in for a little jump here, and that's my friend Coyote. And there he's dead, just jumped on his head. Haha, <laughs> fucking idiot. Getting killed by that. Then I have a medic here who heals pretty well. So I'm just gonna stay on this high ground and shoot some rockets, go back. And uh, yeah, just hanging around here, spy checking, of course. Rogue rockets are cool. And here, most of you guys wouldn't even think about this, but I have like 144 health and I'm like, shit, they're on the payload. I gotta go, I gotta go, gotta stop. <laughs> Bitch. How are you ruining my, my awesomeness? I would have landed on those heavies and at least almost kind of killed maybe one of them. Ugh. Oh well. I'll show you the power of the whip. Which, which uh, only works sometimes. If you ever used it, it's, it's frustrating. It's how unreliable it is. All right, so here we are, uh, upward last. Like this situation right here, if you were on the blue team, Uber, rocket jumping, mantreads, fucking killed easily these sentries even with the pyro protecting. So making a little jump there and then falling down like a boss killing the spy. And then there's a little jump you can do on the railing there to get back. I see the medic, and I kill him and then I just whip him back into spawn because now we gotta do the supportive role that I mentioned earlier because I don't have a secondary so I might as well use my time on the ground quite effectively. So then of course I missed the jump because of fucking unreliable rocket jumps. Kill this guy. 
And now we have an Uber ready to go. And this is the strength of this. I can whip the medic if he would at any point in time be close to me. And then he was a bit passive. So we had to pop Uber earlier. But that, you know, shit happens. But then you can basically just walk in here. And you can see the pyro air blasting me. I... If we had a slightly more Uber, um, if the medic would have been closer and I would have gotten the whip faster, that would have not been the case. You can saw that you saw that even while I was moving forward, the uh, air blast pretty much put me in the same spot, and then I could move forward again because the air blast isn't fast enough to stop you from moving forward. And then, of course, this is a good spot just for defending last in upward in general. Up here is a soldier shooting down. It's easy peasy. Here's that coyote guy again, killing him. Doesn't stand a chance. Pyro runs in without knowing anything. And then shooting down on this heavy. Check my back. That's usually when a spy gets you. It's when you're busy in the front. Hasn't really been a problem with spies. And then we go out here and see teams here. And we're like, ah, oh, fucking attack! There's nothing! And I just... Did you see that? Did you see? Have you witnessed how good I am at this game? Have you... Have you seen? Have you seen? I turned off numlock, that's why I, I spent a lot of time doing this. All right, so here we are, here we are. All right, well, watch this, watch this, watch this. So I go and I jump, I shoot a rocket, and I hit the guy. Do you see that? Fucking uh, predictable all day, every day. Totally wasn't like a lock shot. Don't ask me to do it again. I, don't, I, I can only do it once. Then we go for another jump and we use the air strafe so you can see we get this nice little angle and we landed right where the demo man would have maybe have been if he was alive and moving forward and then we jump back to get more heals from the medic and then we whip this and just check the back and see if there's more spies because now we have people in the front and then just going for another jump like these blind rocket jumps I love doing that and this is how you finish off in style victory and then we're just gonna sunbathe on this roof bask in our victory that we had in this game. All right. Moving on, we're gonna watch some more sentry jumps where you can jump on the sentry. Sometimes it makes a huge difference, other times it doesn't. So now we're here on upward. And we're gonna show you this. So this is the spot I was talking about in the last, or a couple of replays ago. And of course, this is the only spot where you put dispensers and teleporters. Do not pull to put them elsewhere because everywhere else is not as good. Maybe if you have multiple engineers, sure. If you're the only one, no. And of course, it's going to be hard to get in here without any overheal because we are taking a lot of damage. So then we whip people and you can see it doesn't... Like, I'm like, come on! There we go. All right. Going to rocket jump. And here, actually, the gun is actually hitting me. And normally, if I weren't wearing the mantreads, I would have taken pushback, and most likely I would have jumped, and I would have stopped, and I couldn't have made the jump. However, I got these babies, and I just jump right up there and kill the sentry, and then I get killed right after. But if the engineer would have been behind it, it wouldn't have made a difference, because I would have killed the engineer too. So jumping sentries and jumping heavies, you can absolutely do that. However, don't expect to live or get away. It's a one-way ticket to death, but it's a glorious death. At least. All right, so the next one is actually going to be me doing something we've seen before, and that is jumping on top of sentries. Jumping on top of sentries is not something I recommend, but in this case, it can work sometimes. It's just, it's very weird, and it's very against everything you've ever learned. So here we are in enclosure, just gonna run straight out of the gate. Just be like, I'm a dox hound, I'm so angry. Here, take this random crit, double kill, skill shot for me. And then uh, try and whip this demo, can't really do it. So then we are very low on health. Well, of course, we're just gonna go back. And this medic absolutely refused to heal anyone but that one fucking heavy. Um, so if you see him, be sure to yell at him to heal everybody. And then I'm just whipping everybody, going in. And there we have a sentry down in the corner. Whoops, I don't have a lot of health. And I'm just gonna land on top of it. And at this time I would have probably been launched further back. But I have a s friend here who is now allowed to live because I'm taking all the pushback. And then we shoot the second rocket and the sentry blows up to the scout that was behind me and that was allowed to shoot at it. Because like Jesus, I died so he could kill the sentry. Cool. 
so next up is going to be me again it's just it's just me until the end so then yeah you can see my rocket jumps aren't perfect they are uh, very much in need of practice but then we whip the heavy use the speed utility from the soldier oh you're mine medic you're mine <laughs> and boop and this is that was the one-way ticket i traded my life for the medic and it felt good like i always laugh when you get like the doink sound especially when you land on people that you don't know is there like an invisible spy or just like you're watching somewhere else and someone just lands uh you land on someone it's just so funny cool So, coming up next, it's gonna be some me trusting a medic. Uh, and you know how, the, like I always say, always trust your medic, even when he lets you down. So this is enclosure, we're now defending. Gonna run forward here with this whip, we're gonna look for the medic, there we go. Some soldiers there, taking him out, be sure to go back. Like, having the whip is just so useful, because you can do this and make this stuff, and... Oh, there's a sentry. Like, oh shit, okay. Okay. At that angle, I can't really go get it. And now... Oh, I can see the medic is building. It's building fast. We're approaching 100%. All right, medic! I got the speed! There's the sentry! Just right-click at any point in time, and I can fuck what are you do... Medic. Medic. Medic, come on. Medic. Medic. The stars align. The power rushes through me. Everything is in our favor. And the medic's like, how do I Uber? I don't I don't know how. How I I don't know how. Which button do you press to Uber? I don't know. Ugh. Ugh. But always trust your medic. If he would an Uber, we would have had a great time. So this is the finale. The last replay of this. Here we are, gonna jump out on the bad water. Gonna try and whip the medic to safety, and he's like, you know what, I can just Uber and not die. So then we jump in like a duck's hound, going back in that badger hole, trying to kill everything. We don't care, we're just so aggressive, like rah, 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 rah. All right, so then I'm gonna try and whip the medic so he can go where he wants. Gonna jump up this map room along with my other soldier friend. Also, if you can pair this with, like, Conch, it's also extremely good. You go in first, and you heal, and you take the damage, and he can advance forward. There we go. I want this medic! This medic is mine, and this pyro's like, no, uh that medic is not yours. I'm gonna come and stop you. And this medic actually smart standing below the ceiling. And this is gonna be... Jump. Who would win? A pyro flamey boy, or a soldier man? <laughs> The answer is fucking nobody, because we both died. Oh. I'll show you that one again in real time. Uh, I, I just fucking lost it there. It was just so funny, because I've been bat Like, I didn't show it, but I've been battling, like, this other pyro and this medic uh, pretty much the entire game. And we were just, like, at each other's throats, and that was kind of, like, like, the end part. So here we are. I'm just going to fast forward. Through here. Da, 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 da. All right, there we go. So there we go. Here's the jump. Fuck. And uh, shoot. And e <laughs> yeah. So I said that it was the finale, but that was actually that was the fake finale. Now was the real finale, right? I'm not even gonna say anything on this one. It's uh, it's Amadeus, and that's all you need to know. Mantreads suck, dude. <laughs> God, what the? That's the, like the dumbest shit I've seen in a while. Like, 
You land in front of the sniper like, oh god, I gotta see that again. Like, how many times did you fucking land in front of that soul, that the sniper? <laughs> like, come on, dude. So here we are. Okay, so here we are. And then there he is. And then be like, all right, let's get him. <laughs> and then fucking miss. And he's like, I don't see anything. <laughs> And then it's like, all right, one more time. Uh, and two times. <laughs> it's not a problem twice. It's like, all right, this time. Fuck. And then the sniper's like, hey, what's going on? The fuck? <laughs> this spy shows up. And then, oh. The medic is like waiting like a dog. I need to fucking die. Oh. Oh, man, that made my day. Whew. It's like, it gets funnier every time I watch it. Oh, dude. So yeah, man treads. Very good for a sentry busting and staying where you are. However, it's not something I would recommend running all the time. It's a response weapon, right? Uh, because you respond to a situation like, oh, the pyro is denying us from going around this corner. Uh, what should we do? Well, I'll use this. Well, just walk in. Uh, and since I didn't show that, I'll, I'll show it now. Uh, so you know what it looks like as soon as my game loads. So, as for now, I think this weapon is fine. It's very difficult to use and very situational. However, it excels in the situation it's supposed to be be good at. Right? Uh, so, let's see here. Right, here we go. Uh, so let's turn on bot mimic and I'll show you how... This is me just standing here. This is me going forward. Let's do uh, bot. Bots don't move, so. It actually, uh, bot refill, so he gets his ammo back. So if I just, you see, he actually can't stop you. So that's really good. Uh, it's great for being like the guy who goes in first on sentries, takes all the pushback, and then doesn't die. It's also great for bombing heavies, but you might not survive, and the heavy might survive, depending. But you can land on top of them despite them shooting you, because you hardly take any pushback, and you will kill them. Cool. Great. Nice. So, for next week, we're going to do a sniper episode, because uh, why not? And we had a weapon that was changed, and we haven't done a sniper episode in a very long time, I think. So it's going to be this weapon, uh, the Sydney Sleeper. Um, now affects Jurati for some reason. And uh, you can use this with whatever loadout you want, but it's going to be the Piss Sniper. Jurati is optional, Bushwhack optional, just have to use this one. Uh, and you can play on maps and send me you doing well, working with teammates, stuff like that. Show us where it's good and show it where it's shit. And then we can kind of make an assessment of uh, where this weapon stands. I actually haven't used it since they patched it, so I will be looking forward to that. Also, for people who made it this far, there's Discord. You can join us in the description below if you're watching this on YouTube. Otherwise, there is a raffle link as well where you can win an item or a hat or something. We do this every week, and you have six days to get it. And uh, thank you for watching.